Hi guys, welcome back. In the first part, we've looked at generating some drawings. Okay. In the second part, we'll be looking at how to connect your assembly components to one another, which we've done already. It's already posted both videos. And now we'll be looking at generating the drawings for this assembly drawing. Your assembly drawing needs to be open. The file that you'll be opening will resemble your assembly drawing as seen here. You need to be able to see the top properly. That's your home button to show you the isometric view. Let's say that's the front. Or you can say this is the front. Right? Right click. You can go right click on your, on your box. And then set current view as front. And that will be the front that you'll draw out in your IDW for manufacturing or assembly. Right, I'm going to open a new page. Uh, we're going to go straight down to ISO IDW. Or you can also use ISO DWG. On the left hand side, click Create. Click Base. And then there's your front popping up straight away. Now we will generate the side view. Project it. And there's your side view coming out. Left click, right click. And click create with your left click button. Let's go and project again and get a top view. Click on the red dotted square. And go down. And left click, right click and left click on create. Now this is what we have thus far. Please make sure you put it down properly. It's very, very important. Okay, that's first angle. If you want this to be in third angle, I like to keep it simple and keep it in first angle. The main thing is, is the drawing readable and can you work from there? Right? Let's put in the first couple of dimensions. And I'm going to go to annotate, dimension, and... For assembly, your dimensions need to show where your components are going to sit within the main component. Like the bracket is the main component. So I'm going to choose a corner there. From this point to there, that's the dimension. We have 17. Left click. Choose 0 there with your left click and OK with left click again. I'm going to do another dimension. Left click on dimension and click on the, at the same point so that you can get an understanding where you, your components are sitting and you can do that. Okay, there we have 35. Just make sure that this is sitting the same distance away from the drawing and from one another, these dimensions. Let's bring this a little bit down so we can make place for more. I'm going to click on dimension again from the same corner outwards to the center of the pulley and we can have another dimension it should be the same distance left click and left click and choose zero and say OK and now we have four dimensions we don't want to see dimensions of pulleys and dimen this type of dimension this is not what we want to see we don't want to see this because that's already there in the parts. What we need to see is the dimensions of assembly. Okay. You can also do this. And put another dimension here. From there to there. To the face of the pulley. And then escape. And then make sure you see your little X sign there. Keep in your left click and drag your dimension away there, make sure the spacing are equally, look more or less equal, and then it, it will be very neat. It's a very neat type of structure. Okay, I think this explains doing all the parts here. No other dimensions is needed. Let me show you another way of dimensioning. I'm going to click on dimension. Let's look at the chain dimension. You can left click on the first line. Then the second line left click, the third line, the fourth line, 
and then obviously your fifth line. Make sure you don't see anything dimensions showing after you've clicked the last line or any line in between. Then you need to start over. Make sure you click directly on the lines. So you're going to right click now and click left click on continue. Then left click again, right click again and click on create. Okay, that is your chain dimension. But the main dimension that I'm actually looking for is the baseline to show where the components sit in the assembly. That's my baseline there. Left click, left click, left click, left click, and left click. Then I'm going to say right click and left click on continue. There's all my dimensions. Then left click again. Now, listen to me. Right click. Keep your cursor on create and left click again. The next thing that we need to do is to create a table. How do you create a table? Remember for assembly, you've stored all your parts based on names in the part one drawing that I've given to you guys. It's posted already. Please go look at part one of three component creation. So I'm going to click on table. And then you're going to click on parts list. And these are all left click. Parts list. You guys can see. Now you need to go to the document. Look at this. Select document. You know, need to go to the document where your parts are contained in. This is the folder. Pictures roller assembly. Assembly IAM. So you click on it. Right. The assembly IAM uh, drawing. And that's what we're happy with. We're going to say OK. And OK. And what pops up there is an illustration of your parts list. You can do a left click and there's your parts list. It's shown here. Your quantity for your bracket is 1. Your quantity for your bush is 2. Your pin is 1. Your roller is 1. You can also go all to your description. Let's say you're double clicking on the green. And this little table will pop up and you can click on here. Right in there you can type. Your bracket is made out of mild steel. Right, you can type mild steel. If you need to type in materials. Your bush is made out of Teflon. Right. These are just examples. This is the type of material used for plain bearings. Your pin is made out of, let's say, um, copper, which, which is a bare choice. It's better to leave it as mild steel as well to keep, to keep uniformity through your design when you calculate the stresses on each component. And uh, design is a different topic. Okay. Then your roller, mild steel. Or let's say plastic. We are just exaggerating here. Okay. Uh, and say apply. Now in there you have your description. What it is made of. Your material. And then you have your part number. Your quantity and your item. Right. This part number. Uh, you can change it to actual numbers. And just write that as the bracket. And bush. To be able to have part numbers because in industry each part is a number if you need to buy a bush you'll give the part number and they'll come back with a price for you so your part number can be a number as well but in this case we just have the names there so if you need to make space for your part number right here you'll write in your part numbers and then you have your bracket bush and, 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 and pin and then obviously you can add another piece of the table to say what is it made of Right, that is your table. Let's first go in, place another view in the corner, and this is what it looked like. Left click, right click, create. Okay. Right, guys, now I'm going to show you how to do your balloon. You go to table, keep it on table, annotate, table, and then go click on balloon. And now you have to see that little plus sign on your cursor. And now you can select the first component. The first one is the bracket. You can either choose it here, there, or there. 
I can see a lot of space here. I'm left clicking, going outwards, and I left click again, right click, keep your curves on continue, and left click on continue. Wonderful. Let's go. You, you can still see the plus sign there. It wants the next component from you. So you're going to keep it on your bush there. There's your bush, this one or that one. Make sure it's highlighted or zoom your, your drawing by rolling your mouse wheel. Left click. And I'm going out in this direction here. Make sure it aligns. Look at the dotted line. I'm left clicking again. Right click. Left click on continue. That's part number two. It's shown there. Part number two is the bush. And I'm going to go for the pin now. I know this is my pin. I'm left clicking on the pin, moving out. Make sure it aligns like there. It's aligning very nicely. Make sure the distance of your balloons are more or less equal. Left click, right click, left click on continue, and you're done. I'm clicking on the roller. Same thing, left click, right click, continue. That is your balloons. Okay, this is what we have, guys. And this is what I expect, the quality of work that you need to produce when being tested. In the next section, I will show you how to section this drawing.